So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be looking at an arc length example. So let's talk a little bit about the intuition. So if we have a curve, we can approximate the arc length with line segments. So something like this. And then we can use the Pythagorean formula to get the arc length of this first segment. So the arc length of this first segment, well, if we have sides a, b, and c, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this means that the arc length here is equal to the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So I'll call this delta y and this delta x. Now, if we, uh, if we simplify, well, I shouldn't say simplify. Let's say rewrite it in a useful way. So we'll factor out of this expression a delta x squared. So we'll end up with the square root of 1 plus, and now we have delta y over delta x delta y over delta x squared. But now on the outside, we're going to have a square root of delta x squared, or just delta x. All right, so this is an expression for this arc length. So what do we do with calculus? Well, we can add up a bunch of these things. And when we make them smaller and smaller and smaller, so they are, in fact, infinitely small, we end up with an integral. So all of these deltas become d's. So the arc length of this curve from, let's say this is from a to b, is going to be the integral from a to b of this expression. Right? We're going to have one of these expressions for each of these things, so that becomes our integrand with d's instead of deltas. So the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. So this is our arc length formula and our informal argument in support of it. So let's look at an example. So let's find the arc length of y equals x cubed over 3 plus 1 over 4x from 5 to 7. OK, so let's start with the inside. We want to find dy dx. And eventually, we want to find the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. Start with dy dx. Well, the derivative of this x cubed over 3 is simply x squared. And the derivative of 1 over 4x is negative 1 over 4x squared. Now we want to square this. So dy dx squared is x to the fourth. We square the first term. Then we take the product of these two terms and multiply it by 2, which gives us minus 1 half because this x squared cancel out. And then plus the square of this last term, which is 1 over 16 x to the fourth. So see, we're slowly building up the integrand. Now we want to add 1 to this. So 1 plus dy dx squared equals, well, we have a constant term here. We're adding 1 to it, so this negative 1 half becomes positive 1 half. So this is x to the fourth plus 1 half plus 1 over 16 x to the fourth. Now, what can we do with this thing? Well, this expression here, x to the fourth minus 1 half plus 1 over 16 x to the fourth, arose from squaring this term, x squared minus 1 over 4x squared. If we change this minus to a plus, we can factor it not as x squared minus this, but as x squared plus 
1 over 4x squared. So that's our expression under the square root in the integrand. It's just this quantity squared. So the integral from 5 to 7 of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx is the integral from 5 to 7 of the square root of this thing. Well, taking the square root of this thing squared leaves us with just this term inside. So we have the integral from 5 to 7 of x squared plus 1 over 4 x squared dx. And then when we find the antiderivatives of these things, we get x cubed over 3 minus 1 over 4x, and we're evaluating that from 5 to 7. So we get 7 cubed over 3 minus 1 over 28 minus, and now in parentheses, 5 cubed over 3 minus 1 over 20. And this is our arc length. Now one thing to note before we're done, the expression inside here has to be pretty nice for it to work out so we actually get a nice looking antiderivative. This expression is pretty easy to figure, to, to anti-differentiate. It's very, very easy to get something inside this square root that you can't deal with with nice techniques. But in this case, we do get something nice, and here's the arc length of our function.